Good morning, Antioch Church of Long Beach. Welcome, welcome to the house of God. If you could stand on your feet. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to worship God this morning? And if you're not, that's all right because God has been too good, so I'm about to worship him. Give me some room. I need to be able to have some elbow room up in here because I don't need to be cajoled. You don't have to twist my arm because God brought me into the place of worship this morning and that's what he created me to do. Say, make some room, make some room, make some room. I'm here to worship. I wish I had some people in the room this morning. I wish I had some people in the house of God this morning that says, I am ready to worship God because he has been too good. Psalms 100 says, shout with joy for the Lord. All the earth, worship the Lord with gladness. That's what we about to do this morning. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord, your God, is good. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Oh, and I love this verse. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. I wish I had some people in the room that said, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. God, you've been so good to me. You've been better to me than I could ever be to myself. I thank you, Lord. I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with praise. Because God, it is in you I live. It is in you I move. It is in you I have my very being. Shout to God with a voice of triumph in this place. Father God, we invite you in this morning. We thank you for being the center of our praise. We ask that you live, move, and have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, family. Just one more second of lifting up the name of Jesus. If you came to this place with breath in your lungs, just tell them thank you. Thank you. We honor you. We are here for you and for you alone. We give you glory and honor and praise because you're good. You're great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, just clap those hands like this. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are. We give you praise. Come on, let's do it together. Jingle. You are great, God. Yeah. All together, let's sing it. Sing it. Just 
lift your hands to give you glory. To give you glory. And Lord, I lift my hands to, to give you praise. Yes, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, I will sing, yeah. 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 Come on, family, lift it. Sing, I lift my hands. you've done I'll for me oh for all you are I will praise you Lord from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun just for who you are I'll praise you Lord even in the good times yes I'll praise you Lord If you know that God has done great things for you, if you've been rescued or healed, this is your moment to lift your hands and your voice and praise the Lord. Oh, I say thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Hey, if you never do another thing, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. you have been everything that we've ever needed and so even as the wind and waves come we make this declaration here that we will praise you in the midst of the storm we'll praise you in the midst of the wind and rain we'll praise you because you are good and you are great and you are greatly to be praised if you feel that way all across this room and right where you are I want you to just give Jesus a praise in advance in advance because no matter what comes or happens, he is still good. Yeah. Just say thank you. No matter what comes, I will bless you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Over time, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. You know he's worthy of every breath that you have. Just tell him thank you. Just tell him you are great. And I will praise you ever again. Thank you, Jesus. We have seen who you are. We've seen all that you've done for us. We know 
will be trusted. You turn everything that meant for evil, you turned it for good. And so we give you praise. This is our testimony right here. to you.
Praise right here in this moment for everything that he's turned for you. I don't know if you can remember where you were, but I know where I was, and I know that he turned shame into glory. And so we're standing here today because of his goodness, his grace, his mercy over each and every one of our lives. So one more second, giving him all the glory and praise that is worthy of. We're here because of you. You turn midnight into sunshine. Oh, we love you. Oh. And we thank you. Come on, just tell them thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for each and every one of us. We wouldn't be here unless it was for you. us and raise us to new life and so even in this moment we sing of the greatness of your name this name that now we can call on in the midst of anything that is happening that is opposing heaven we can say Jesus and we know you'll be right there oh we thank you Jesus no other name but yours we call What a one. 
lift the name of Jesus. Just shout out Jesus. He is the greatest name. He is the one who can fix everything that's broken. He is the one who heals everything that has not been good. And so in this moment, we recognize that it's your name, Jesus, that deserves all the power and the glory. So we'll forever exalt your name. Oh, you won the victory. Death could not hold you. Come on. The veil tore before you. And you silenced the birth of sin and grave. Oh, we know the heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. Oh, for you are raised to life again. Come on, sing it out, Shay. You have no right and you have no equal. We know now and forever. God, you reign above it all, and yours is the kingdom. We give you the glory. Yours is the name above all names. So we. Lift it up, Jay. The name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Come on, lift that name. The powerful name. Is. Oh, nothing can stay it against. Oh, the power and the undefeated name. Jesus. Jesus. Jay. Right time singing. You have no right. No the name of Jesus. We know now and forever. You reign. Yes, you reign. And yours is the King. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. Be exalted, Jesus, in our lives, in our families, in our city. Oh, Jesus, be lifted higher, be lifted higher, Jesus. Oh. Come on, just for a second, keep that lift of Jesus, of the name of Jesus. Elevate that name above anything that you're facing now. We sing Jesus over the government. We sing Jesus over suicide. We speak Jesus over death. We speak Jesus over poverty. We speak Jesus over any sickness in the name of Jesus. Oh, what a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. Come on, just for time. What a powerful name the name of Jesus Christ. See what a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand it. Nothing can stand it. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. to the second in the Godhead, Jesus, Son of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. As we prepare to remember Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, if you need communion, just wave your hands. 
and the ushers will come and give you communion. And as we prepare, Father God, right now, we just examine our hearts. Father God, we repent for any sins that we may have committed. We ask you to forgive us. Father God, we thank you for moments like this where you allow us to remember you. And the Bible says, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, on the night he was betrayed, what did he do on the night he was betrayed? Father God, I know there's some people in this room who are dealing with betrayal, who are dealing with dishonesty, who have been dealing with deception. And right now I pray for the Holy Spirit's revelation. Father God, what should we do when we are betrayed? And the Bible says on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, Oh, Father God, thank you for that revelation. As we're dealing with betrayal, Father God, help us to pause and remember you and to give thanks. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Right now, you can take the bread and break it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. And I say this every time and I'm not going to stop saying it. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant of grace, of grace, of mercy, of forgiveness, because I am a sinner and I need your blood to cover me. Thank you, Lord. Do this. Whenever you drink in remembrance of me, you may drink. And so, Father God, we don't take it for granted. Yes, that's something to praise him for. We don't take it for granted that we're able to pause and remember you this morning. Thank you, God, for your resurrection power. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ, your son, to die on the cross, to shed his precious blood for the remission of our sins. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen if you believe it. Thank you, Lord. And so we prepare for offering. We continue our worship service this morning with preparation to give. You can give through the app Push Pay through the Antioch Church of Long Beach app. You can also text to give. And as we prepare to give, consider this scripture. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. That's one of the reasons why we give, because we're so thankful. Psalms 118 tells us, give thanks to the Lord. His love, his mercy endures forever. So Father God, this morning we bring to you our gifts. We thank you for everything that you put into our hands. And we offer a portion back to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Please direct your attention to the video announcements. There's something coming for you, so be sure to tune in. Hey, Antioch. We are launching Big Little, a Bible study collective. This is a great way for you to deepen your spiritual walk and stay connected here at Antioch. We have some amazing teachers teaching classes in many different areas. I'm sure you'll find one that's a good fit for you. So please join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, we have a fitness class every Wednesday at 6 p.m. right before Bible study. Meet us today after church to get signed up. church as we posture ourselves to go a little deeper. Let's just keep this moment of worship with the Lord and invite his presence to fill this place. Holy Spirit, would you have your way? Do what only you can do in our hearts, in our lives. We need you and we welcome you. Oh, 
First of all, he's already filled this place, but he wants to do more. And so I encourage you in this moment to just keep this posture of openness before him. Holy Spirit, we know that when you come, everything changes. Our hearts and our minds, our souls begin to be healed and changed by your presence. And so it's with this heart that we ask you to come. Let us become more aware of your just ask him, let us experience the glory of your good. Let us be, let us be part of your prayer. Would you, let us experience would you help me? I'm often struck by sometimes, um, the difficulty in trying to capture spiritual dynamics, things that are unseen, but very real. God knew this in, um, this is why in several places in the Bible, there is a tangible physical symbol attached to invisible spiritual realities. Because God knew that even with the prominence of the Holy Spirit falling upon his people, in dramatic fashion, sometimes there will be a loss of the sense of the sacred. So, they symbolically often would take anointing oil, olive oil, oil, and lay it upon people and give instructions to lay oil upon people. And we know that there's, there's nothing in the oil. It's the power of God, but sometimes in this this natural and adorning world, sometimes spiritual realities can be lost if there's not some sort of cord corresponding snapshot or touch point in the natural. And we, we get used to singing about God and in, in encounters with God and God's presence and the glory of his presence and welcoming his presence. And as I was sitting there, one of the things I was struck by is there's no one of greatness or stature who can enter into a space, an intimate space, and then not change, either draw our attention or depending on how significant that figure is or how much they've done for you, where they enter in and it not change our posture. When the President of the United States walks into a room, Everyone that's not hating and is a part of that governmental structure, even if they don't like it, there's, there is a, there's a corresponding action in response to their greatness. They, they stand. They, they, some people get a cheer when they walk into the room. I've been, I've been to games, I've been to the Laker games or Rams games and every now and then they'll go from the field and they'll put the spotlight on a legend or a celebrity or someone who's great and people in the arena are so enamored with the person that's sitting there they forget about the game for a minute they start applauding and cheering because the spotlight's been put on that individual 
And I was struck as, um, and this is not a, a declaration of shame, but it's one of clarity. As we were sitting there, we talk about the presence of the Lord. As the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. The presence of the Lord draws near. We, we, we from this platform are not singing to you. You, you know that, right? We, we, are, we are singing with you. We're not worshiping for you. I'm going to lose some members. It's okay. I'd rather have the glory with half of y'all than have an arena or a, a, a congregation full of folks that don't like me. I'm going to give it to you straight, no chaser. But because there's no tangible, natural symbol of a physical person walking into this place, sometimes it becomes easy to, to passively treat the presence of the living God. And if we're not careful in this house, we can professionalize the presence of the living God. That's something the praise team does. That's something the pastor does. Now I've done my three. That was praise and worship. This came after offering. So, so maybe it is a musical selection for our enjoyment. No. Anytime we sing about the presence of the living God. Anytime we name the name of the one that has made a way, that has open doors, that has given promotion, that has kept us safe from our enemies. Anytime we utter the name of the one, if he does nothing else for me, he's already done enough. If anytime we talk about the one that saved our soul, that's made us whole, that's changed our eternal destination, that snatched the taste of drugs out of our mouth and out of our veins, that brought wayward children back home that kept the car it spin out of control but my life was preserved anytime I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me I I don't care what you do I don't care if you clap I don't care if you lift a hand I don't care if tears roll down your face I don't care if you fall on your face but when greatness enters the room it ought to be recognized. Will somebody in this place help me recognize the one that made a way, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us become more I need Antioch to be lit every time we walk into this place. But the principle, God is a God, and I just have to take this moment, I'm going to get to the word, but God is a God of honor. Say honor. Whatever we honor, God gives us more of. Let me, let me say it again. Whatever we honor, God gives us more of. I've watched churches that have brought revival to cities and to this nation, but got comfortable with the presence of God, like God was supposed to show up and move in power just because they showed up. And I've watched churches that have brought revival to their region dry up and die because they got comfortable with the presence, with the favor, with the benefits, with the power of the living God. May it never be said of us that the presence of God and the opportunity to cry out to God becomes so common 
that we lose reverence and honor for it. Yeah, yeah, cry out. Yeah, that, see, that's what I'm talking about. You don't have to wait for permission. You don't have to wait for the pastor to say it. You don't have to wait for the praise leaders to say, lift your hands or somebody shout. When God's been good to you, sometimes out of order, like the 10 lepers who needed a healing, they were embarrassed, but they began to cry out to the living God. When, if he's done anything for you, sometimes you break the prescription sometimes you break the order and just say hey I God I praise you it's okay it's okay it's all right it's all right God will give us hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. God will give us, He'll give us more of what we honor. If you honor His presence, He'll give you more and more and more. And I'm not saying whether God is here or not. For those who understand what I'm saying, when I say God will give you more of his presence, the weight of his presence will become so great that what you came in here worried about, you forget about. Because in comparison to his all-surpassing greatness, everything you're struggling with becomes minimized. Your enemy's attacks become minimized. The circumstance that you're in becomes minimized next to the greatness of a glorious God yeah if you honor it he'll give you more look at somebody tell me if you honor it he'll give you more he'll give you more why do I need more of his presence because everything I need is in his presence everything I need is in his presence everything I need in his, is his presence there is blessing in his presence there's favor in his presence there's revelation in his presence there are answers in his presence there's resource in his presence there's healing in his presence tell somebody you need more you need more you need more hallelujah 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 I didn't come for people that came for a show I came for some folks that came for more of I need more, God, more, more, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, more, more, more. Would you do it, God? I need more. I need more. I need more. Listen, listen. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. I know it's a whole lot of new folks in here, but if you've been rocking with us for longer than five years, you know what God will do with his presence. The last time we cried out for more and we met nightly crying out for more, God began to heal bodies. God doubled the size of the ministry. When we began to cry out for more, God gave people jobs that they did not deserve. You're chasing all the stuff, but I dare you to cry out for more of his presence, more of his power, more of his glory. Because if you can get his presence, you get everything.
I know what you're saying. You're saying it doesn't take all that. It doesn't take all that screaming. For somebody it does. But listen to me. The last time we asked for more, some quietly just put their hands like this and said, God more. God more. God more. God is not always looking at the volume of your voice, but the meditation of your heart. God is not always looking at the amplification of your voice, but he's looking at the hunger of your internal being for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake shall be filled. Does anybody need a fresh feeling? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody need a fresh feeling? Is anybody tired of living on empty? Does anybody need a fresh, a fresh feeling? You've been going through the motion. You've been showing up. I say, God, I need more of you. 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 I know you think I'm crazy, but sometime in the spirit, you just get stuck on certain things that you can't let go of. The Bible says that the cherubs, they continue because they're struck by the glory of God to cry out holy, 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 holy. My, my repeat is more, 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 more. more 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 I'm tired of singing on empty I'm tired of ministering on empty I'm tired of discerning your will on empty God I need more of more of you somebody in this place is tired of believing that he's with you just by faith but sometimes God will give you faith and the feels somebody needs the feeling again somebody needs the presence of God the nearness of God again somebody needs the confidence of God when you walk back into work on Monday at they're more with me than there are against me not only do I believe it but I feel his presence But God rarely gives more where there is no recognition or honor of what it is he carries and who he is. The glory didn't fill the temple until the priest, and we'll talk about this in the week to come as we enter into alignment as it relates to worship, but he did not fill the temple until the priest everything in the order and the meticulous detail of putting everything to order was simply a way of revealing that they honored the instruction and honored the presence of the living God in the book of Acts as the presence of God filled that upper room and they did with intention they prayed with intention for God to do what God said he would do and then they came to discover that there was something out of order. There were 12, and they said the Messiah desired that there be 12, the number of government, the number of alignment and order. They said Judas went and killed himself after he betrayed the Messiah, and there are only 11 of us now. There need to be 12 of us. They cast lots and brought Matthias up to fill the place of Judas, the number of order. Say order. Yeah, order. What was order? It was them observing the desire of heaven on earth, observing the desire of the Messiah, the ascended one now that they're here to do ministry on earth. What was the order? It was an honor for God's way. 
time. They prayed every night. They prayed every day to honor his presence. They, they begin to worship to honor his presence. They put things that were out of order in order to honor his presence. And the glory of the living God fell. Filled every one of them. Because God will give you more of what you honor. That's why when they spilled out into the streets, the Holy Spirit didn't just overtake everyone who was there listening and observing, but Peter had to stand up and give instruction on what it is that they were seeing. He said, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke of. And when they had understanding, with honor, they said, we want some of that too. And the same spirit of the living God that was on them fell on the listener because God gives you more of what you honor. Yeah. Because God is a God of honor. I don't think I'm going to get to my message for a second week. Unless y'all down for another hour or two. Oh, those claps stop. Those claps stop. Like, yeah. But this is it, and we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap in a moment. In fact, we're going to do, we're gonna do and give you a chance to do in a sweet and a pure way what we just talked about. Because God will give us more of what we honor. And I need you to promise me something. There'll be good days. There'll be da bad days. There'll be days where you argue with your, you threaten to slap your kids 10 times before you even get into the church doors. Oh, in the car ride, nobody just, okay. There'll be days where you're running late trying to figure it out. There'll be times where you won't see eye to eye with your spouse before you walk in the door. Sometimes you may not see eye to eye with them while you're in the door. But whatever it is, you come in with in this place. Um, can I see real quick, and not for length of tenure, but for just depth of investment. Can I... Can I see my OG, my, my ride or die Antioch? Just make some noise real quick. If you ride or die. Listen, I need you to help a brother out. There will be an influx of people who don't know what we're about. Who don't know our history and our journeying with God that will walk into this place looking for some of them for what they've heard about. For some, they've heard about the healings. For some, they've heard about the worship, the word. For some, they've heard about the presence of loving people full of the love of God. For, for others, they've heard about the power of the people who, 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 if you didn't get it in church, can prophesy to you in the parking lot and give you what you need. And so as they come in, as I spoke to the young man last week, that's, man, that's how you know I'm getting older, I guess. Dang. When I start calling people young man. <laughs> no amount of skinny jeans is gonna get me out of that, huh? <laughs> as I spoke to the young man, <laughs> dang, it's happening. Last week, and I said to him that I feel like in his environment, he was not called to be a thermometer, but a thermostat. He was not called to gauge the climate of the places he went into or the friend circles he went into to determine how hot and cold or how cold it was. But rather, he's been called not to be a thermometer, but a thermostat. He, he's been called to change the temperature if it's cold, to, to warm it up, to... To, to bring with him what he carries on the inside. And, and here's one thing that happens in the cycles of moves of God. 
is that God will move in a significant way. Mountain peak. But often ministries or movements will find themselves back in a plateau or a valley because they don't continue to honor God in the way that they did while they were climbing the mountain. And if I had time to work this like I wanted to, I would talk about sometimes that's not just the church house, that sometimes that's your house. Some of us don't praise God the way we did while we were believing for the job after we get the job. We pray real good when our credit was jacked up and we still had to go get a car. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of me too. But you be in the bathroom as they're running your credit in tongues. Now that things change, you get brand new, you know. I don't praise God like that anymore. You know. God hears my heart. I don't even have to open my mouth. You did when you were when credit was jacked up, though. I saw you. I heard you. I was another star. I heard you. So we go up the mountain, and we, we often, after being there for a while, don't continue to do what we did now that we were, where we're try, we were trying to go. And so inevitably, when we do not honor what we honored to get up the mountain, God slowly but surely starts to unravel or undo the benefit that was associated with the way we honored him. Not to punish us, but to cause us, follow me, to miss, to long for, to hunger what we lost. God doesn't do it to punish us. He does, does it to induce hunger. Say hunger. He says to the children of Israel, I've, I've humbled you and tested you that I might see what's in your heart. He says, I've, hum I've humbled you by causing you to hunger. And then, after you hunger, because when you hunger, you cry out. When you hunger, you get vocal. When you hunger, you speak up on it. Your kids are cool until they get hungry. Then they start getting crazy. Daddy, I said, Daddy! I want to go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and have to look at him and tell him it's closed on Sunday. You know. Hunger induces honor once again. And so God will allow it to, to atrophy for us to discern or to cry out for what we are incrementally losing. But sometimes the blessing is so good that we forget as it subtly declines to cry out for it until we find ourselves back in a deficit or back in the valley. I'm going to tell you what I need from you, OGs. As people come into this place, the temptation will be to assimilate to the people that are fresh to this environment. What do I mean by that? If you have somebody sitting next to you that's cool and unbothered, like, it becomes easy. It's kind of contagious. You say, you know, I'm going to chill today. If there's someone who, who does not know the journeying with God of worship, it becomes easier as the atmosphere shifts to, to become a ther thermometer. Take a little further. On those Sundays, all right, it rarely happens, but on those Sundays where y'all not cracking, y'all all right, and I'm stinking up the joint. They're better than me, but, but there'll be times where it didn't go down. You won't say, oh my God, that was a great message, pastor. There's sometimes I just have to take that long walk back to the green room. <laughs> and it's a long week. Know that if I ever bomb, that next Sunday is going to be bomb. Yeah, man.
That's a long time to think about it. That's a long walk of shame. Like, all right, then. But in those weeks, I need some people, if you don't experience revival, to bring revival with you. This is not a message I'm done, but in the first century church, they wouldn't meet in, in cathedrals or buildings like this. Often in the first century church, they would meet in small groups, they would meet in houses, and after they worshiped and after they, they ministered, they would, they would eat and they would eat, they would gather around meals, say meals, food. It was like, but it was not a buffet. You got that? It was not a buffet where you come, it wasn't a Sunday brunch. You come and get the crab legs and, and the French toast and the spread was prepared for you. But it was more likened to a potluck where you came to eat something but you also came with something. That's good, man. And what I need from the OGs in here is on those Sundays where you're looking at the buffet and there's no crab legs, there's no French toast, I need you to bring something with you. I need you to bring a hallelujah. I need you to bring a praise the Lord. I need you to bring a lifted hand. I need you to bring a hunger and thirst for righteousness sake. I need you to bring a more of you, God. I need you to bring a God, will you do it again? Because here's what I found. It doesn't take many people who are sold out for God to turn a place out. To get a fire started. It doesn't take much. I'm done and I'm gonna go after this. I'm gonna go sit down. And Kalisha's going to come close you out because she knows how to do it in time. But I remember um, when I was at Morehouse, you know, I was a starving student. And I was um, on campus. They made you live on campus for that first year. And I was in Graves Hall. It was walking distance. They had a library. Nobody, no church. I had no car. There were no churches really in walking distance. Well, none I wanted to go to. And... Um, I remember them telling me about this church that'll, that'll, that'll pick you up. I'm like, look at God. And so I, they would park in front of the club, I mean, the library. They called the, you know, y'all laughing. The library, because there was three campuses, you know, four back then, Morehouse, Spellman, Clark, and Morris Brown. They were all there back then, and everything was cracking. I mean, you know, the, the library, the library there, they called the, y'all, listen, they called the library Club Woody. Because you go in there to study, but it's cracking. You're like, yo, yo, yo. They don't do it like that in L.A. Wow, wow. People come get dressed up to study. So now you're walking with me. I, I want to go to church, and the bus would come and park in front of Club Woody, the library. And um, they, these charter buses pull up. At the time, it was New Birth. It was the name of the church, New Birth. They, they, these charter buses would pull up, and... Um, you know, they, they pick you up, and, and I, here's how I became a member. It wasn't the glory of God, it wasn't none of that. They gave me a ride, didn't have a ride. Picked me up in, in style, a charter bus, not a school bus, where your knees, you know, you couldn't walk by the time you, a charter bus. Take me to church, got back on the bus to go back to Club Woody, go to campus, and there was a box, a two-piece. KFC, two pieces of biscuit and some mashed potatoes. I said, this is my kind of church, my God, my kind of church. But, but one week, one week, and I'm done, one week I was there and um, it was one of those Sundays, it wasn't normal praise and worship leader, it was one of those guest praise and worship leaders, you know what I mean? That no matter what, come on, come on, lift your, lift your hand, do a backflip, turn to your neighbor, shout to God. I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm tired, no, I don't want to, I don't feel like it. I think I broke up with my girlfriend the day before. I, my grades, I was on academic probation, you know? And it was one of those where just be happy I came to church today. Anybody ever been there? Some of you are there right now, like, look, Pastor, I don't want to be hearing about praise. I just be happy I showed up. I could have streamed. I could have been at the beach this week. Yeah, this, I read the weather report. 
It's one of those on Sundays. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I sat in the back. I didn't want to go sit in the student section up front. I didn't want to sit in VIP. I wasn't VIP, but I knew, I knew some people. And so I sat in the second to, no, maybe, maybe four rows from the back. And so I'm going through it. I sat down. After a while, my head hurt. Like, lift your hands. Clap your hands. Shout in the Lord. Shabbat. The, back then, Shabbat. They even heard that a long time, right? That dates it. That tells you about how long ago. Shabbat the Lord. Everybody knew what it was. Hey, remember that? And I'm sitting there. It's one of these services. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. I'm worn out. I had a good 20 minutes. Anybody been there? Good 20 minutes of glory in me. After that, Pastor, you get nothing. Now listen, if the praise team, if y'all use up all my minutes of glory, I can't turn to my neighbor, Pastor, when you get up because it's all used up. <laughs> and so I tried, I tried, but I was preoccupied. I just, after a while, I sat down and she kept going. Come on, if you really love Jesus, stand to your feet. <laughs> you really love him, lift your hands. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, and so what I try to do, real slick, I know all the church tricks. I know all, I've been in church my whole life, I know all y'all church tricks. You know, you never notice the, the ministers that don't like the pastor in churches growing up, when he starts preaching real good, they open up their Bible like they're looking for a text, you know, and their heads down so they don't have to shout with the rest of the saints because they don't like the pastor. They're not looking for a passage. That's the, that's the church protest. He finished his text. He's shouting now. He's, he's hooping, y'all. I know all the church tricks, y'all. And so I employed one of my church tricks to get out of praising the way this lady was trying to get me to praise because it wasn't even God wasn't even asking for all that. And so I sit in the back. Here's what I do. If you ever want need to do this in a hostile worship environment, you'll never happen here at Antioch, but there are hostile worship environments where you leave like you just came out of a combat zone by the time you finish, right? Here's how you get out of a hostile worship environment. You sit down, don't sit down and look. Take your hand, put them, put them on your face and just go down like this. They'll think you're really in some deep prayer or meditation. They usually leave you alone. And so in this hostile worship environment, I take my hands, put them over my face and I kneel down like this. I'm in worship, sitting in my seat. And she says, everybody who loves Jesus, Stand up and give him a praise. And I'm just like this. I'm not, I ain't got no more praises. And there were some other people that were with me. They, they were sitting down too behind me. And a and, and lady came over to me and she said, she tapped me. She said, the usher, what was ushers? That's why, that's why we have some greeters. Greeters are, greeters, give it up for the greeters. Y'all know about, not ushers, y'all know about ushers. This was an usher. That woman came up to me, poked me. Young man, did you hear what she said? Like who would disturb, disturb somebody's quiet time with the Lord? She grabbed my arm, get up, and worship him. And I got up, I was frustrated. Didn't want to do it, but then I just began to lift my hands. I forgot about the lady that was on stage and bullying people. I just began to lift my hands. And as I lifted my hands, I began to thank God and give him glory that he deserved. And as I began to thank him, I began to look over my life. I, I began to remember that I didn't even deserve to be where I was. I should be back at home. My SAT was 670. I partied the night before and spelled Abba Dabba Do all the way down the page. I shouldn't have been there. But as I lifted my hand, the Lord reminded me that you're standing in your blessing because of my favor and my presence. As, as I began to think about it, I, 
he began to remind me of one benefit after the other now my hands are lifted and tears are beginning to fall down my face and at this time the usher went and she poked everybody who was sitting down to make sure they stood they didn't want to be there worshiping they were just like me they were going through whatever they were going through and in this worship of the Lord as his goodness I spoke of his goodness it was reminded of his benefits it wasn't about those around me I forgot about what they were doing on stage but I realized that God no matter what the environment and no matter what I'm going through is always worthy of the praise and if I can properly honor his presence he'll give me more of his presence and if he gives me more of his presence he'll bring the answers he'll bring the benefits he'll bring the encouragement he'll bring the favor I need to deal with some of what I came in the door with as I was lifting my hands in worship it went from rope me mechanic expression to a spiritual encounter and God had one more thing left he reminded me that my worship is for him from me but not always about me let me try this side he reminded me y'all the balcony that my worship was for him from me but not always about me because sometimes Jesus gives permission to do extra not even for ourselves but for others when Lazarus had died Jesus knew he died Jesus better yet waited for him to die because sometimes the depth of sorrow or the depth of glory is attached to God delivering you from a depth of sorrow if he had to heal them from sickness that's one praise but to heal them from death God I feel I'm trying to move on but since I didn't give you a message that's somebody's word you've gone from sickness to death you've gone from okay to worse and you think God's forgotten about you know sometimes God wants a greater depth of glory from your so he lets it get worse before he ever makes it better God I he, Jesus we got to move on Jesus we gotta go Jesus says at that moment he says something I've never seen before he says he says he goes to pray to God he says father in dramatic fashion father hear me then he whispers to God, for I, all, I know you always hear me. Look out this side. He says, Father, hear me. I know you always hear me. Father, heal me. I know you always hear me, but I did it for their sake. I know what I'm brokering for you. It didn't take all that. But there's some people listening who don't have the level of faith I have. So God, I know sometimes you give me permission to do a little extra, not just for myself, but for somebody in the room who needs to experience your glory. So I'm, I'm in the back row. The rest of them were pumped into worship. I have entered into authentic worship. The Lord said, you're not finished. Tears falling down my eyes, my hands lifted in the air. I, everything around me disappeared. Only the glory of God was what I was after. And as I lift my, lifted my hands, I heard the Lord say, and they were wrapping up. This hostile, mediocre, at best, worship was wrapping up. And and in this moment of worship, God said, it didn't make sense. It didn't match the environment. The environment was sort of, it was a little sus. God says, as I'm lifting my hands, he says, bow down and worship. I said, here? Number one, they're about to go to offering. Number two, this worship 
ain't bow down worthy. This is whack. Lord said, bow down and worship me. And I went from this glorious experience now to deliberating in my mind, looking at people around me, worrying about who was around me. And that's what I mean, thermostat versus thermometer, because you often gauge what is happening around you. And based on what's around you, you will get permission for what you want to do. But thermostats don't wait for permission for the people around them. Thermostats say God has been too good for me not to give him what he deserves. And, but I was still wrestling. I was still wrestling. Still wrestling in my mind. And I'm like... Your glory is on my life. And you've ministered to me, telling me that you'll do more than I ever imagined. God, I thank you. I'm lifting my hands and tears are falling down my face. And I have a moment with God. The service has moved on. They're in offering and they're in announcements. The, the service has moved on. And I hear it's moved on, so I'm embarrassed to even get up with tears in my face, up down on my knees. During a mediocre Sunday. And I say, forget it, I'm not ashamed, I've got to get up. I kept my eyes closed so I wouldn't be embarrassed in front of anybody. I made my way to my feet. I stood up, wiped my tears, went to sit down, opened my eyes. And when I opened Christine, my eyes, Every row behind me, though the program had moved on, I look back and everybody behind me who saw what I did was still on their face crying out to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on a mediocre Sunday. So if God would use one broke college student on a mediocre Sunday to worship him and to give him glory, if he would do it for every row that was behind me, what would he do if he could find a hundred people that are unashamed to give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise? We got to go, but I dare somebody in this place to lift up the name of your King, of your Lord, of your Maker. Take the next 30 seconds to bless the name of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Hallelujah. That was a message. It was a different kind of message, but it was a message. As I was over at the side of the stage, the Holy Spirit was reminding me of when I was in high school, our Bible study club, the vice president would type the agenda. At the end of every agenda, it would always say the Holy Spirit has freedom and room to move. So he can disrupt all of this that we have planned. And that's what he did this morning. So pay attention in moments like this where it's free flowing, God is still speaking. Still have your notes, still be sensitive and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. I hope and I trust that he was speaking to you this morning through all of that. 
If you're in this place and you say, I would like to make Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of my life. I've never done it, but I would like to do that this morning. The ushers are going to be here. I'm sorry, the, the prayer counselors are going to be here at the foot of the stage to pray with you. And if you're in this place and you say, I would like to make Antioch Church of Long Beach my church home, the prayer counselors are going to be here ready to welcome you to this house house of faith okay father god we thank you for what you did in this place this morning lord continue to speak to us throughout the rest of this week and we thank you so much for every deposit that you're placing on the inside of us some of us walked into this place empty this morning but father god we are leaving changed we are leaving transformed and we are leaving full and so we say now may the saving grace of our lord and savior and the sweet communion of his holy spirit may it rest may it rule and may it abide now henceforth forth and forever as we are standing on our legacy and reaching for our destiny it shall matter that we have lived look at your neighbor and say go in peace go in love I'm happy to see you give them a hug if they're open to it if not a fist bump is okay you guys have a great week we love you